So I've been using the M1 MacBook Air for over two years now. In today's video I thought I'd share my experience so far and discuss what it's been like to trade on and use on a daily basis. I know a lot of you guys watching are considering buying one for trading, so maybe this video could help you decide whether you want to pick one up or not. So as I mentioned, I've been using the M1 MacBook Air as my main trading device for over two years now, and I have to say I've enjoyed every second of it. The M1 MacBook Air isn't the most powerful laptop out there, however it is surprisingly good. I believe a lot of people avoid Apple's MacBook Air line as they believe that the MacBook Air isn't as good as the Pro, so instead they end up paying more for the more powerful MacBook Pro. However, in my experience, the MacBook Air is a very capable laptop. I primarily use it for trading, photo editing, video editing and other tasks, and in my two years of using it, I can't remember a time where it struggled to complete any task. It's probably one of the best devices that I've purchased from Apple. As much as I enjoyed using the iPad Pro, I still find myself picking up the MacBook Air for those longer work sessions. So let's look at what exactly makes the MacBook Air so efficient and good value for money, starting with the design. One of my favourite things about the MacBook Air must be the design. Before picking up the MacBook Air, I was a MacBook Pro user, and I have to say the laptop was always very heavy and bulky to take around. So when I picked up the MacBook Air, I was surprised at how light and slim the laptop was. Now when I pick up any other laptop than the MacBook Air, I'm shocked at how heavy they are. The only downside to the M1 MacBook Air's design is the lack of ports. You only have two USB-C ports and the headphone jack. The trackpad and keyboard are probably the best you'll find on any laptop. They both work very efficiently and make for a great user experience. You also have a fingerprint scanner on the MacBook Air which makes locking and unlocking your MacBook extremely fast. In conclusion, the MacBook Air is an extremely well designed device with very few flaws. When it comes to the display on the M1 MacBook Air, you won't be disappointed. The 13.3 inch retina display is perfect for consuming content and analysing charts. Everything is sharp and clear which makes using the MacBook extremely enjoyable. Colours are bright and vibrant which makes it easy to use in different lighting conditions. You also have Apple's True Tone technology built in, so the MacBook automatically adjusts the colour temperature of your display to your environment for a more natural viewing experience. This is great for those late night technical analysis sessions. For me this is a great feature as I like to trade the Asia session which is at 2am for me. When I purchased my MacBook Air in 2020, I originally purchased it for university and trading, however now I use it for more content creating which I never planned on, but I was surprised at how well the M1 chip handled heavy applications like Photoshop, Lightroom, TradingView, Final Cut and other demanding applications. When it comes to trading the M1 MacBook Air has no issues, I'm able to complete all my essential tasks such as technical analysis and fundamental analysis. Two years on and the MacBook Air still runs as efficiently as day one. This is probably why I prefer MacBooks over Windows laptops. They are just more reliable and don't need to be updated as often as Windows. I've had this MacBook for over two years now and I have no intention of upgrading it just yet, simply because it's just as capable as some of Apple's and Windows more expensive laptops. Okay, so I know a lot of you guys who are considering picking up a MacBook Air want to know what TradingView looks like on the device. TradingView looks and runs without any issues on the MacBook Air. I previously used TradingView on Safari, however I then realised you can download the application. So now I can simply access it from my dock instead of loading it up on a browser. I believe the app is better optimised and consumes less battery. As previously when I used TradingView on Safari I found that my MacBook's battery would drain a lot quicker. 
so I'd recommend downloading the application instead of using it on the browser. In conclusion, TradingView is extremely enjoyable to use on the MacBook Air. When I'm not using my iPad Pro, I really enjoy carrying out my technical analysis on the MacBook Air. When it comes to carrying out fundamental analysis on the MacBook Air, you can of course access all your main sources such as Yahoo Finance, Bloomberg and Financial Times. You can simply access any of these sites on Safari or the browser of your choice. The process of carrying out your fundamental analysis probably isn't as fun as on the iPad, but it can still be done efficiently. However, when doing in-depth and more detailed fundamental analysis, it's definitely better to do it on the MacBook. Things such as reading monetary policies and understanding the motivation behind central banks' decisions is easier to do on a MacBook than an iPad, simply because tablets sometimes don't support and display certain file types and links. Before we carry on with today's video, I just wanted to let you know that you can get a 14-day free trial to my online newsletter today, where I share all my trade setups and entries for each trading week. The newsletter consists of both technical and fundamental analysis and is sent straight to your inbox. Click the link in the description box for your 14 day free trial. For us traders, good battery life is crucial as we use our devices for multiple hours a day, whether it's for technical analysis, monitoring positions or entering trades. When it comes to battery life on the MacBook Air, I wouldn't say it's amazing, but it isn't terrible. As I always have TradingView running, my battery life naturally dies a lot quicker, which is expected. But I can easily complete my technical analysis and have plenty of battery life left over for other tasks. Most of the time I have my MacBook plugged into a charger anyway, so it's not a really an issue. Since getting an external monitor, I've mainly used my MacBook whilst connected to my external display. Being able to connect the MacBook to a larger external display is extremely helpful when viewing and analysing charts. This process has become even more enjoyable since Apple added the universal control feature, as I now essentially have a free screen setup. The fact that I can control all my devices using either my Bluetooth keyboard and mouse, the trackpad and keyboard on my laptop, or the Magic Keyboard is very efficient. For a trader like myself, this free display setup allows me to visualize my fundamental news, main chart and second chart all at the same time. So should you buy the M1 MacBook Air in 2023? In my opinion, it's still a very good laptop for the price. The M1 MacBook Air is definitely on the more budget friendly side when compared to other Apple products. For the price you are paying, you are definitely getting a very powerful laptop regardless of what the specs may say. Of course you now have the option of buying the M2 MacBook Air, which has some new features. But the M2 will also cost you considerably more. If I personally was picking up a new MacBook Air today, I would of course opt for the M2 MacBook Air. However, if I wanted to save some money and still get a great laptop, I would go for the M1. So if you have a lot of money to spend, by all means grab the M2. However, if you want to save some money, definitely go for the M1 MacBook Air. You won't be disappointed. Another question I get asked a lot is whether I should buy an M1 MacBook Air or an iPad Pro. And my answer to that question is always, if you already have a perfectly working laptop, then get the iPad Pro. However, if you don't have either a laptop or an iPad, then get the MacBook Air. As good as the iPad Pro is, it still has its limitations. Alright guys, that's it for today's video. If you made it this far, thanks for watching. Please leave a like and subscribe, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.